his nest, and yet this bird, only by God's grace, continues to move on and live on. But the one thing that it's its enemy is if it's wet. If it's on the ground and it rains, it cannot fly. That's the only time it is vulnerable to be killed by prey, like a bobcat or, a, you know what I'm saying, something, uh, you know, an animal of prey. Because as an eagle, it's too quick. They can't get it. So when the rains of oppression and depression come and we're sitting, you get the picture? That's when we are easy picking, easy prey for the enemy of our soul, the lion with the little L that's prowling around looking to get us. Because we're not to live earthbound any longer. We are meant to be soaring. We can hold ourselves down, and others can hold ourselves down. Others can hold us down and try to keep us, tether us to circumstances, tether us to situations. That's not what the Lord is telling us to do. When if we have a loss of vision and we come into a place of complacency, what happens is captive egos become purposeless, absolutely purposeless. An eagle in a zoo, what a pathetic sight. I'm not talking the places that when they've been injured and, you know, they keep them in. I'm talking when they're in a zoo. Like any other animal, don't get me going. But when we're captive, when we are purposeless and we can't soar, what happens is, Word of God says we perish for lack of vision. We slowly forget who we are, why we were created. We give up. And God's, we can die to God's destiny and plans and dreams for our lives. So it's always being alert, aware as watchmen in our posts, guarding our territory, guarding our sphere of authority. It's being willing to fly into the shadow lands and set other captives free. Um, to be birds of prey but not prey on each other. Okay? <laughs> the eagles, you know, we don't prey on each other, we prey on snakes. We prey on the enemy. We don't attack each other in the people I'm saying. We don't prey on each other. An eagle is a bird of prey, but it preys on that which it hunts. Um, and there are places that we can have scars just like the eagles do from battles and from defending its territory against predator birds, other things. But when we have scars and the feathers have grown back and the healing balm has been applied, our scars are really so that when God sends us to other people, people see them and that we know that we're real and that we can relate to us and they can trust us because we've got some battle scars. We've been through it. I know I pay attention when I see battle scars on people's lives. Not just battle scars, but battle scars that are healed. That's all I'm saying, that are healed. Not raw, eye open, bleeding everywhere. Battle scars that are healed. And wisdom comes from that. Eagles with dove hearts and songs. For he calls us to arise and spread our wings and soar. He comes and hovers and stirs up the safe place that we're in and causes us by the breath of his spirit to, to rise up as he blows. And he says, rise up on my spirit, rise up on my breath, for I breathe life. Catch the wind of my breath and arise and soar into your destiny with me. I just want to take a couple more minutes and I want to read you an amazing story. This is a story of perseverance. This is the story of a dream. This is a story of men who did not give up. This is called, they're called the Lonely Eagles. It's the Tuskegee Airmen. How many of you know about the Tuskegee Airmen? The 99th Squadron, the Black Squadron of the Air Corps. It says this, the Tuskegee Airmen in World War II had to rise above segregation, rejection, and special standards set for them, making it twice as hard to prove their inability, not their ability. Nobody would speak to them. Some died in training. Training was so difficult for them. Even after
after they trained, only one out of ten would be allowed to fly and never in combat. Yet they had the highest IQ of anybody in the school. The rejection they had strengthened them and formed a deep character within. They were more respected by the Germans who knew of their flying expertise because expertise, they never lost one bomber. They became one of the most requested groups in war that had vision to fly. Benjamin Davis dreamed of flying as a little boy. He had never seen a black pilot, but inside he had a dream to fly. After all the battles of war, he did not receive recognition until December of 1998, and he became the first four-star general in retirement and the first black officer to be honored. We get the vision, we move in ministry, the call comes, the desire for training, and the enemy emerges with all he has. The Germans were allowed to sit in the very seats um, they were not allowed to sit in, um, in, in, in PO, as POWs. Um, we need to persevere and never quit, never endure and give hope to others. One day, one of the planes had mechanical problems. They were ordered to make a forced landing on rural Alabama Road. As the planes coming in to land, a chain gang composed mostly of black men on the side of the road cutting weeds with swing blades. Two prison guards who were patrolling watched the planes descend and said with pride, here come our boys. The planes rolled to a stop and two pilots climbed out to inspect the damage. Both had on helmets and scarves, etc., and were unrecognizable from that point of their skin color. They walked around the plane and began to inspect it. And now only ten yards in front of the chain gang and guards, one of the pilots pulls off his helmet and goggles and turns to the crowd gathered by the plane and says, it's not bad, we'll be able to fix it as good as new. The prison guards were shocked to see the pilots were black. One middle-aged prisoner had lived in hopeless existence, shackled in ankle chains and swinging that blade in the hot sun day in and day out under the threat of shotguns. Never would he be released. Hope suddenly lights up in his face and he stared in unbelief. He finally whispers to himself and all those around him, they is colored flyers. He saw by this that there could be a different future for his people. And so, this is um, what I'll close with. Will we be willing to fly into the wilderness as an eagle with the heart of a dove and reflect the great rescuer, reflect his glory? Will we illuminate the darkness of hopelessness and despair? Will we illuminate the darkness of purposelessness and fly into places of captivity, ablaze with the spirit of the living God, and bring the message of a future and a hope? Will we let the reflection of his light blind the eyes of captors as we dive in to rescue others? Because it's his light that we fly into the dark night of the soul and let the presence declare, let there be light. In Jesus' name. It's important that we never forget where we came from. Who we were when God found us. Be forever grateful and deeply in love. So we would be willing to go back into the land of captivity to look for those, just like Jesus did, to lead them out and to show them the land of the living. What does it take to do that? It takes the character of Jesus Christ and nothing else. Absolutely nothing else will do it. The heart of an eagle, the heart of a dove, the eye of an eagle, the eye of a dove. It's the nature of Jesus. Tenderness is terribleness. Peripheral vision and yet eyes to see front and back. And so, Father, I just pray that you would just help us all to seek you, to cry out for your nature.
in your character. That as we spend time with you, as we walk with you, as we walk our lives with no compartments, as we offer our lives as living sacrifices each and every day, Lord, would you truly cause us to be as you are, the great eagle who flew into the land of darkness and despair. You carried us up. It says that you took us up in your eagle wings. You brought us out of the land of death and despair and you carried and brought us into the land of the living where everything was gearing and teeming with life. Lord, would you cause us to live like that, oh God. Would you cause us to live abandoned lives that see as you see, that hear as you hear. Cause us to see four miles away in the spirit. Cause us to see, Lord God, and hear the cries of the needy, the cries of the desperate, the cries, oh God, of the fatherless. The orphan cries, God. And Father, and those cries that are in us, any place within us, would you bring healing? Would you bring wholeness? And would you cause us to walk in your amazing love? And I pray this in Jesus' name.